Hey, hey, what is up, guys? It is RB and Hardware, and in today's video, we're gonna build the best budget 1440p gaming PC for early 2021 using the following parts. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly step by step how to put this complete PC build together. Now, we're going to test it out in 15 of the most popular games in both 1080p ultra settings, but also at 1440p. We're also gonna look at what kind of frame rate you can expect having ray tracing turned on now if you want to build the exact machine as well all parts i'm using are linked up down below now before we get into the video hey my name is robin and on this channel i turn you into a pc builder expert and so if that is something you're interested in smash the like button down below for the youtube algorithm and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and let me know what price target or budget we should cover next now speaking of budget, this machine will cost you right about $800 using the following parts. And for $800 you'll be able to play all games at 1080p max settings with great frame rate. But even 1440p gaming is definitely possible too. Taking a quick sneak peek at the performance shows that we're able to run all games tested with very good results. But yeah, we're gonna dive into the performance, uh, the gaming performance in much greater detail after we completed the build. Anyway, inside this machine we find a quad core, third gen Ryzen, an RTX 3060 graphics card, as well as a super fast M.2 drive, 16 gigs of RAM, and everything housed inside this tough faces case. Smash the like button and let me know if there's any other games out there that you think I should include for benchmarking in future videos. So as always I like to start with the CPU, RAM and motherboard and for today's build I ended up picking the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max coming in at $115 mainly because I wanted a little bit of RGB to look at through the temper glass side panel but yeah $115 is definitely on the higher end. There is definitely no reason to spend over $100 on the motherboard except if you're looking for you know a specific feature that you're willing to spend extra for if you want to get away as cheaply as possible one board that i think takes all the boxes and got all the bells and whistles is this gigabyte b450m board which is selling for just 74 dollars this is a slightly smaller form factor but it will work just as good for this pc build as well and you will get the same frame rate and gaming experience regardless which out of these two motherboards you end up picking and so I'm gonna leave this up to you guys and both boards are linked up down below. So this is a quad core CPU with 4 cores and 8 threads with the base clock of 3.6 and 3.9 GHz turbo. It is called the Ryzen 3 3100 and this is a beast of a processor. Having a look at the CPU gaming performance we see that the Ryzen 3100 is fast enough to compete with some of Intel's much more expensive models. Thanks to Zen 2's low latency, high clock speed and high IPC, the $99 3100 doesn't disappoint. Now though the quad core Ryzen can't really compete with the most expensive picks out there, it is still a fantastic processor in a cheaper system with a graphics card priced around two to three hundred dollars. Now as we can see a motherboard comes with a retention frame pre-installed but since we're gonna use a cooler with springs we're gonna need to remove the retention frame from the motherboard. And now installing the processor in the socket is easy. First you want to open the metal arm. Secondly you want to locate what's looking like a golden triangle on the processor. There is happened to be an exact triangle printed on the motherboard socket as well. And so what you want to do is you want to simply turn the CPU so these triangles match up. Then you simply drop the processor into the socket and gently move the metal arm all the way down until it locks in place. And you have officially installed the CPU. Inside the CPU box also comes a heatsink or a cooler. And the cooler is actually pretty good, especially if you're not interested in doing overclocking. And I actually don't see any reasons not to use it, as it will save us a couple of dollars. 
the cooler installment is also very simple. If this is the first time installing the CPU cooler, you will have some thermal grease pre-applied and you don't need to apply some thermal grease on the CPU lid as you see I'm doing right now. Now position the CPU cooler so that the four spring screws on the heatsink align with the four holes on the back plate. Once aligned, carefully place the heatsink onto the CPU. Using a screwdriver, turn each spring screw half a turn clockwise to ensure that the spring screw makes a connection with the back plate, follow a diagonal pattern across the CPU cooler like this, further tightening each spring screw with a full turn. And with all four spring screws connected to the back plate, tighten them until you feel resistance, then check the CPU cooler to double check that it's uh, properly secured to the motherboard. Lastly, yeah, we want to connect the fan power cable to the CPU cooler to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Moving on to system RAM and this is actually quite important. I'm gonna go with the Corsair Vengeance LPX because of its stellar quality and compatibility with the Ryzen platform. But yeah, there are a few other picks out there that I would highly recommend as well and those are linked up down below. Now this RAM kit is rated at 3200 MHz which has time and time again proven to be a sweet spot for the Ryzen platform and this will give you a frame rate boost compared to, you know, a slower clock kit as the way that the CPU and RAM communicate with each other. And installing these is exactly as simple as it looks. We're gonna populate the second and the fourth dim slot and so so you want to open up the toggle for these two and simply plug them in just like so let's install our m.2 drive and the m.2 slot is located right here and so what you want to do is you want to loosen this tiny screw just like so then gently slide the m.2 unit into the socket with the little notch on the opposite side of the cpu cooler just like so finally yeah take the little screw and hold it down and screw it down until it stops now we can move our motherboard assembly if you like and install it in our case. And for today's build I ended up picking the Asus TUF GT301 for $99. Now the GT301 comes with a massive perforated front for maximum airflow. We have three 120mm pre-installed RGB fans plus another 120mm fan mounted at the rear. This creates a very effective cooling solution where the three fans sucks air through the front and where the rear fan drags the air and dumps it out of the back of the case. Now there is room to fit the 240 radiator at the top and we find two usb ports a power button as well as a reset and we also find a mic and audio as well as a button that controls the built-in rgb customization in order to get access to the inside we're gonna need to untie these two thumb screws next we're going to install our io shield that we find inside our motherboard box this is what it looks like and it goes in from the back of the case with these circular audio ports you see here located at the bottom. Now with the CPU cooler installed we can just grab on to the CPU fan and slide the whole assembly into place. One standoff in the middle is sort of higher than the other ones and this allows the motherboard to lock into place while we secure it. And we're gonna use the screws that comes provided by Asus. Now with the motherboard installed before we move on to power supply and graphics, now is a good time to connect the chassis cables that takes care of the front audio and USB as well as the power button. And let's start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. Now the connector is located at the bottom of the motherboard. Moving on to front audio and this cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly we have the front panel connectors and you find this on the lower right side. Now this can be a bit tricky but just take your time. Now I typically like to install my power supply and for today's build I ended up picking this 550 watt unit from Corsair. This is a compact and silent and high quality PSU with 80 plus bronze efficiency certification coming in at just $58. As you're installing this, you want to make sure you got the fan facing downwards and gently slide it into place and secure it. We're gonna do a couple of cables and wiring before installing our graphics. And first up we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard and this one goes to a connector on the mid right side. 
Next up we got the 8 pin power for our CPU. This is also referred to as the EPS and this one goes all the way up to the top left side corner. Alright guys, so it's time to install our graphics and for today's build we find the brand new Ampere based RTX 3060, this one specifically from MSI, equipped with their Gaming X cooler. Now the 3060 is based on a brand new Ampere based GPU called GA106, unlike the 3060 Ti who is a cut down GA104, which is the same GPU we find inside the RTX 3070. In terms of specifications, the 3060 it comes with 3584 CUDA cores and it comes with a whopping 12 gigs of G6 memory and so you're gonna have a hard time filling up this bad boy. But this is important guys, this GPU has an MSRP of $329 and this is what I think the card is worth and I don't think you should spend much more than that. However, the prices of GPUs in general have spiked way higher on pretty much any GPUs out there because of low current supply. Although we hope the situation gets better any day now. Remember guys, as much as you want to build a new PC right now, don't spend more than what Nvidia is pricing it. $339 is what Nvidia is selling this for and so you shouldn't spend six or $700. Anyway, as I briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video, the 3060 has a fantastic 1080p graphics card that is capable of handling 1440p gaming too. Plug in the graphics card and take this dual PCIe cable and plug it in to a graphics card just like so. And what is left to do is to flip the case around, whack on the side panel and we have officially completed our $800 PC build and if you did everything right, your system should power on. So let's fire up some games and find out how it performs. And on your screen now we're looking at the performance numbers that I gathered from today's build that I ended up running 15 games in both 1080p and 1440p and overall I'm very happy with the results. But let's dive a bit deeper in some of the games tested and let's first take a look at Death Stranding and let's start with 1080p. Now this beautiful looking game runs fantastic on our build with an average of around 96 FPS with 1% low at around 70 FPS running on the highest settings. At 1440p with these same settings we're averaging around 80 FPS and 70 FPS at 1% low so very solid numbers. Moving on to CSGO and here I went for max settings and this results in about 170 FPS on average jumping to 1440p again then same graphic settings and this results in about 150 FPS. Doom Eternal is next up and I'm picking Ultra Nightmare settings at 1080p. This results in 136 FPS on average with 95 at 1% low and 110 FPS at 1440p using the same settings. Overwatch is next up where we're looking at 1080p high settings and this results in over 160 FPS on average and over 130 FPS at 1% low. Now at 1440p we saw almost 130 FPS on average and around 97 FPS at 1% low using the epic settings. Valorant runs with an average of 185 FPS. Call of Duty Warzone at 1080p runs with an average of 110 FPS using the highest possible settings and at 1440p we saw around 80 FPS on average. Now Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing activated using the medium ray tracing settings we saw around 66 FPS on average and 50 FPS at 1% low whereas in 1440p we were able to squeeze out a whopping 78 FPS. This is whether with high settings and ray tracing turned off and with DLSS turned to auto. Turning ray tracing on at medium settings results in around 52 FPS on average. Again guys, all PC components can be found down below. Now I am starting up a Discord server and yeah, it would be fantastic if you guys wanted to join and start building this community. And here we're going to discuss PC builds and issues you might run into and everything in between. Now you can ask me questions directly if you want to, I'm going to answer anything you guys might be asking. So you definitely want to join the Discord and you find the link to Discord down below. Now, Watch it of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.